Hi, this is Steven and Jen with the Iowa Backyard Farmer, and today we're talking about the most common question that we have gotten probably in a, all year, this time of year. What is the question? Everybody wants to know, can I plant my garden now? And so we'll talk about some some things to consider when selecting when to plant your garden. And if you stay to the end, we'll give you a quick little tour of our greenhouses so you can get an idea of how our plants are looking yeah, at this Yeah, you can see point. in the back it's changed. Like, where did the tomatoes go? They're outside, mostly. Yeah. Yeah. They're, <laughs> everything's moving out. We're so close. So today it's in the 80s. Tomorrow it's in the 80s. Monday, Monday will be in the, the 80s. 80s. Is it time? Can it we sure go? feels like it. <laughs> if, you, if you go to like Menards or Home Depot right now, the garden centers, people are just Everybody on the garden blog, I went here and I went here and I. Oh, yeah. Is it but, time? But is as it I time? look out, <laughs> as I look out, I'm, I'm excited because with the 80s, we don't have to run our greenhouse heaters for yeah, the next three or four months. It's way cheaper. It's way cheaper without Which is paint. nice. But yeah, I look out in the 10 day forecast and I'm like, oh, we're going to still be running our heaters. It's going to be in the 30s next week. And this yeah. is. This is not tomato weather. They want my they want my heated greenhouses at 30s. So we're not there yet, yep. but we are so close. So let's talk about what we consider when we're getting ready to plant. How do you know it's time? Yeah. So there's a lot of folk wisdom on this topic. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard Have you heard this one? You're like plant your corn when oak leaves are as big as squirrel ears. How big are squirrel ears? <laughs> I know. Can you identify an oak tree? <laughs> I, I can identify an oak tree, but uh, yeah, okay, so, that, so that's one I'm not familiar okay. with. Or have you heard this one? Plant your potatoes on Good Friday. That's a common one. We hear that all the I time around here. Lot. My wonderings about that is okay, so Good Friday ranges from what April 20 or March 20th to April 23rd. That's that's like almost five weeks. So it's not it's so, not as exact as you might would like. Um, how about? It's safe to plant after Mother's Day. Mother's Day, so that's a common one. That's a very common one that we hear around here. And Mother's Day is all, always the second Sunday in May. So that ranges from, what, May 8th through the 15th. So that's at least only a one week window. And that does match fairly well with some of our It does match some with, with our, some of our other considerations. So, but it doesn't even begin to tell the whole story. So, are, are um, you saying that our plants don't care about our holidays? I, yes, <laughs> they do not. They do not care. They do not even celebrate all of our holidays. But those holidays are sometimes fun. They're easy to remember. They stick mm -hmm. in your brain. But let's dig a little deeper and see what criteria your plants are looking at when they're yeah. considering when they would like to grow. <laughs> so, so, so we've got what six points we want to cover today on things that we look at when we're trying to decide when to plant our garden. Yeah, and I would like to take this time to say, if you can adopt these these points and really understand them, then you can adapt these things to what you specifically need. Because gardeners are a scrappy, creative bunch, and we do a lot of things that are kind of like on the edges of possible, which is awesome, but you've really got to know how it works. Yeah. So So the first thing that we consider is, is look up your average first, last frost date. That's easy. You can Google it, put in your zip code. There's a lot of websites that will include that information. So that's a really good starting point. Yeah, but this one frustrates you because <laughs> they'll give you like a chart and, and you live I and like breathe charts. charts. <laughs> but I look at a chart and I'm like, it's got 60 numbers on it. What does it mean? <laughs> yeah, and, and so, and, and I do like some of those, but they'll, they'll say, well, your average last frost date, if it's 24 degrees, 26 degrees, 28 degrees, 30 or They're 32. They're very specific. And then, and you get into some of the more detailed ones, and these are the ones that I like. It's, you know, what do you mean by average? Well, if it's 50%, that means 50, first, time, 50, 50 of the time we're going to freeze later. That's not uh, helpful. That's not very helpful. That's I mean, do helpful. I really want to lose my garden every other year? Depends or 50% of the years? Yeah, uh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, yeah, it can be expensive. I tried this this year. You may have seen if I, if you well, follow us on Facebook or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> I planted some peas in March or February. February. In February. And I was like, it's 60 degrees. The soil is warm enough. It will be great. A few days later, it was 8 degrees. They did not live. No. Nope. And I lost all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Even with our yeah. global warming, frost dates remain a thing. <laughs> uh, yep. But as we look at, uh, thinking back to those charts, here in, in the Des Moines area, the 10% the chance of having an additional 32 degree frost is about May 7th. So I'm back to Mother's Day. So, yeah, Mother's so Day is not a, a bad thing. There you go. If, if, if the type of plant that you're planting 
can't handle the cooler weather. Oh, so, so we have kind of move back to the, the pans. Depends, <laughs> depends on what you're planting. Depends on what you're planting. So Mother's Day might could be even too late for some things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So once you've figured out your your last frost date, that is a guideline. And then depending on what, there are some cool season crops. There's some warm season crops. And, and we'll get into those here in just a second. The second main point to consider is your soil temperature. So the average frost date temperature is really a measure of how cold your air gets. Yeah. That's what it's, it's telling you. Mm -hmm. And the soil temperature, they measure it not at the surface, they're gonna measure it about four inches down. Yeah, and so I got a little story on soil temperature. Can I tell my little yeah, story? Yeah, you can tell your story. So when I was about 19 or 20, I'd moved out of the house and I got a letter from my mom saying that my sisters were so impressed because they had seen my dad. My, my dad, dad is a farmer. Uh, they'd seen my dad out kneeling down praying in the field and they thought, oh, that's so awesome. So dad's, you know, <laughs> dad's out there praying over his crop. And then she laughed and said, what was dad really doing? He was out there with a little soil thermometer, kneeling soil down, <laughs> checking the soil temperature of the field uh, he, he was gonna he plant is a, in. He is a great faithful <laughs> man and um, to be admired in many respects. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Soil so, temperature is a thing. So what am I looking for? Yeah, so when I take soil temperature, I typically look at around the four inch deep mark. Um, you know, most things you're not gonna seed on top. Most things probably not even gonna seed four inches deep, but try to get an idea of the, the temperature at the depth you're going to seed. And so this is just a little meat thermometer. Yeah. Uh, we'll put some links to some better soil thermometers uh, down in the description. Uh, but I'll use this sometimes, you can stick it down take multiple uh, spots in your garden. Uh, sometimes when I can't find this, because sometimes things don't get put away the right place, I'll even just pull out our, our little infrared thermometer, go out with a shovel, dig a hole, dig a little <laughs> hole two or three inches deep, See, get I the temperature. Gardeners, so. find a way, find a way. You can also Google this information, ISU posts this, um, and we'll even post a forecast, mm -hmm. like forecasted. So if you're looking at it now, you're like, it's warm enough to plant now. And next week when we get cold, the soil temperature is going to follow. It's yeah. going to get a little cold again. Yeah, so that's a good resource to look at. I still like to do it myself because we use raised beds and raised beds warm up faster than farm fields do. Um, we have a little bit more of a western slope and so they'll warm up faster than those with maybe more of an eastern slope. But if all else fails, that, It'll that, give that you county a general, level one gives you a pretty good pretty idea. Pretty good idea. Yeah, so um, why should we care? Well, this because you know, in, in many cases, you're either planting roots into soil or you're planting seeds into soil. And seeds are, are particularly sensitive to soil temperatures. And so there are, I mean, there's whole categories of uh, varieties that can handle the cooler temperatures and those that can handle the warmer temperatures. Yeah, so an example, what is the lowest temperature that we've got of vegetable crops that we're looking at that we might could seed in and what is it? Yeah, so they're, you know, the, the really cool season ones are basically if it's 32 degrees, the soil temperature is 32 degrees and... That means you can work it. You'll see it on the back of packages. It's it. like, if you can dig it and it's not frozen solid, you could maybe plant this seed. <laughs> yeah, so I would put, was it spinach into that yeah, category? Yeah, spinach is in that category. Uh, leeks, leeks, lettuce. Can take it. Lettuce can take it cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, parsnips. And so uh, they, their things can, can they, handle that. They can germinate in the soil temperature. That's, they, that's the minimum, yeah. <laughs> they prefer a little warmer. So if I was doing lettuce or leeks, I would probably start those inside and then put them out. Spinach, mm -hmm. I would put direct seed in. But um, yeah. So, so they can handle, so those are really 32 to be the minimum, yep. but uh, they do prefer more in the 60 or 70 degree range. To germinate. But for some of those, you really want to get them in early because... I they, say, why are we pushing this envelope? If they would rather germinate at 70, why aren't I waiting until May with everything else? Because they really don't like your July temperatures, do they? <laughs> no, they do not. Lettuce hates July, radishes yep. hate July. Um, peas, all those things you just listed, they're going to be like, ah, yeah, they, they can't, they can't have the heat. Yeah. <laughs> they can't take it. So a 40 degree minimum temperature, you bring in stuff like beets and broccoli, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, celery, um, Swiss chard, turnips, parsley, peas, radishes, yeah. on, onions. Is, that's when we will do our, our onion. And we're um, there. Seedling. So we're, we're, we're there. there. Mid April and, and all this stuff can be in the garden. You're like, the gardening season has started. Some of you are out there already. Good job. 
Um, plant your lettuce, plant your peas, plant your onions, plant your potatoes. Yeah. Let's go because yeah. they can grow in this temperature. They'll they'll take the cold. They'll take a little mm -hmm. light frost even if we get one. A, a little warmer, you add in um, like corn and tomatoes, at 50 degrees or so. They can they can manage that. Again. <laughs> As a minimum temperature. As a minimum temperature. <laughs> <laughs> they would really rather prefer you know 70s and 80s. So, but if you if you were like. I'm gonna overwinter my. Have you seen those where they're like, I'm gonna overwinter my seeds in the little milk jugs and stuff? It mm -hmm. will. It would potentially sprout around 50 degrees. It's gonna be mm -hmm. little, but yeah, yep. Yeah. And then really the the really warm season stuff. I would say at least warm season that we would grow here in central Iowa, uh, a 60 degree minimum temperature for germination again. And, you know, beans, cucumbers, eggplants, cantaloupes, the melons, basically peppers, yep. okra. Okra likes it even warmer okra, than that. Uh, yeah, okra. Would uh, make it warmer. Pumpkin, squash, watermelon, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, they they do not like, I will say, cold feet. If they have yeah. cold feet, they are going to sulk, and if they sulk, they will not grow well. Yeah. So they will not be happy. Even with that, um, 65 to 85 is more ideal for them. So yeah. they'll germinate, but. Uh, but they're going to be happier a little higher. Yeah. So we're watching our average last frost date. We're watching our, our soil, soil temperature. temperature. So basically it's the air temperature, the soil temperature. And then and let's then, really look at the forecast. Like right now, our next three days is going to be gorgeous. The following seven days are going to be a little bit chilly. And so it's really tempting to want to go out and plant today. I'm sure if we go out today and, and did our soil probe, our, our raised garden bed it would be 60 degrees. Would be 60 degrees. And we'd be like, la, we but, can plant the whole thing. But the forecast, eh, I'd probably still wait a little bit. Yeah, because it will, it's going to drop back down. If I was planting corn like I was a farmer person, you'd look at that temperature and you would say, I want evening temperatures that are consistently above 50 and trending upwards, warm. Yeah. So I'm looking at my 10 day and I'm like, oh look, the night's overnight. Look, it's 50, 52, 55, 50. Yeah. And, and that's you know, kind of a kind stable of warming, warming versus right now. We got 80 degrees, but we'll get 30s in next week. And so right now I call it the ping pong yeah, period. It's it's not settled. We're, yeah. we're having this tug of war and we're like, is it is it going to really warm up for sure? When it warms up for sure, when that weather has settled and it's consistently warm is when you want to plant those warm season crops. Yeah. So... So that's the first three um, items to consider. Number four is soil moisture. And this is one that uh, sometimes I think people forget. They're like, it's warm enough. I just had a big rainstorm. I'm gonna go out and I'll use the term, I'm gonna mud my seeds in. And mud is something Iowa is good at. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> mud is something. Uh, I love the pictures of uh, you see online of somebody who's gone out, you know, even farmers are subject to the spring fever of we're gonna get out in the field and somebody's got their tractor stuck and they've got another tractor hitched to it and they're gonna like, cause they got stuck in the field cause yeah. it was wet. You know, half the field was dry enough. They got to the low area and, and it was not quite and dry enough. And they got enough. stuck. And, and so, so what's the problem with letting things in? You're like, it's Saturday, I have Saturday off. It's a little wet, why, why wouldn't I wanna plant? So the biggest concern is you just get compaction around it. So if you're digging a hole and you're putting mud back on top of it, you, you're breaking down the, the soil structure. You don't have the air pockets that the, the seedlings need It'll to really survive. Over. And then, then you could get a, um, you know, a crusting could come from that. Crusting will usually or also come when you get a rain right afterwards. Um, but yeah, there's things you want to consider if you really want to be able to have your plants germinate and produce well. Yeah, I've, I've also been in this category where I planted my little carrot seeds in a nice little row and then we got a two inch gully washer and I'm like, <laughs> there they went. Yeah, so the, mo <laughs> there, the moisture went. maybe was okay to begin with, but, but the soil moisture right afterwards is, yeah, yeah, yeah. is not so, so good. So keep an eye on the weather and your soil moisture. You mm -hmm. want to plant when it's not really super dry, but definitely not when it's super wet. Yeah, so point number five is the size of the plant. And so, why does that matter? Why do we can even consider the size of the plant if, if we're transplanting? If we're transplanting, well, if little tiny ones and the sun beats on them yeah. and the wind blows. <laughs> we, we've, we've got tomatoes and we're still three weeks away from having anybody pick up tomatoes. Three weeks? Two weeks? Two, anyway, yeah. two to three weeks. And, and we've got stuff in our greenhouse that are this tall. Yep. And we've got stuff in the greenhouse that's about that tall. That tall right now 
could probably handle the sun, the wind, the rain. Yep. That tall? Not so much. So you get a, <laughs> you, a you get a one good big rain and, drop and it's like yeah, flat. So so and um and seedling seeds too. You can you can play with this just a little bit if your soil temperature is nice a good rain can help you work it in and if the air temperature goes down a little bit seeds don't care if they're underground until they emerge right so mm -hmm. you can you can work with that yeah so um, and this is good if you're gonna seek plant everything at once so like for us we plant a lot of things it is more than a one Saturday project and so <laughs> you know we're gonna prioritize things that are maybe bigger they need to get out of their pots sooner we're going to prioritize things that can take a little bit of cold or you know work with it sequence mm -hmm. so that you can um, hold on to things that need a little more time or that would benefit for a little more time um, one year I because we do our big plant cell we did the the Swiss chard and I was like I'm going to plant it out early I'm going to get way ahead and I left some of it in the greenhouse and I planted some out and then it got cold again and the stuff in the greenhouse did better and I was like, I didn't need to rush. It would have been better to hang mm -hmm. on to it. So if it's iffy and you can hang on to it, hang on yeah, to it. Hang on to it. You'll usually come out ahead. Yeah. Uh, see that time and time again where um, people rush. And, and, and since we sell plants, we have people come and they tell us their stories. And, and those that want to pick things up early, it's not uncommon for them to come back and say, actually, yeah, I might need another plant. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that has happened before because we we don't bank even what what did you say who doesn't bet oh, on the weather oh <laughs> yeah you know, warren buffett and i'm gonna butcher it but basically he's like you know oh uh he can measure the risk and, and make bets you know calculated uh, bets on on people and, and concepts and ideas he doesn't bet on the weather yeah because so. mother nature always wins <laughs> but um but we kind of have to and so mm -hmm. we're working with that Yep. Um, our next point. Yep. So point number six is we're going to consider what we're trying to avoid because there are, are some things that we're trying to avoid when we're timing our planting. Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah. So um, probably the most common one I think of is squash vine borer comes and gets our zucchini pretty much every year, and so we will do a an early planting um, as soon as the temperature and everything else is is just right. So that we can get a couple, you know, get a decent harvest before the squash vine borer comes and wipes things out. Then the squash vine borer goes and does its own thing, and then we'll do a planting again and get a second crop. Yeah. Um, so you're trying to avoid so, some pest so, so pressure. So we're avoiding a pest. And issue so if one. you plant a seed a little bit earlier, you're germinating it inside where your soil temperature is warmer. Then we can take it outside where it doesn't matter quite as much, mm -hmm. and we've played with that. Um, another thing to consider is like pumpkins. So in our rush to get everything in the first weekend in May, you might plant your pumpkins and it might <laughs> even be warm enough for it, but you'll get a pumpkin in August. <laughs> yeah. And then you'll be like, wait, Halloween's if, if, if you're trying to, still a month uh, and a half to, to away. To get a, a Halloween um, decoration, you've got to time that you wanna, just, you, just right. You want to time and that. early May is not the best time to No, do the, the people around the corner that grow pumpkins they're closer to June. Yeah, they're, in, they're typically in June and they plant all that. So, age. because you, an early pumpkin that you're just using for fall decoration doesn't feel as festive in the middle of August. Um, another thing that you're trying to avoid is hot weather for your cold season crops. So yeah. we're back to, you know, lettuce is going to bolt, spinach, spinach is going to bolt, radishes are going to get spongy, kale's going to get bitter. Some of these things, you know, I'm yeah. like, we're going to... We, we got to get them in. We got to get them in because they they need that whole growing season, mm -hmm. and we got to get them in. Yep. So point number seven is consider what you're trying to accomplish. So mm -hmm. why would people want to plant early or plant later or plant early or later um, than they maybe otherwise would? So thing I always think of is bragging rights. The number of people that come and say, "Oh, I want to have the biggest tomato on you know the 21st of June." Um, there's bragging rights there. There, and, there are and, bragging rights. And that doesn't rights, just so happen like, in the garden either. And, and I'm guilty of that because I'm like, anyone can have a tomato in August. I want a tomato by Memorial Day. Yeah. <laughs> and so even now as we record, I've got baskets in, in the greenhouse with tomatoes with fruit on them. And I'm like, we're getting there. Yeah. Bragging rights is a real thing. But you can potentially get a bigger yield. Talk to me about tomatoes and yeah. yield and planting early. Yeah, so... Um, if you're growing an indeterminate tomato, 
which basically will will grow and produce until something kills it. Typically, a fall frost. Hopefully, not a spring yeah, frost. Hopefully, not a spring <laughs> frost. Um, yeah, getting those planted early, uh, which is one reason why we sell tomato plants to begin with, and why others sell and buy tomato plants is that the earlier you can get those in, the sooner you're going to get a harvest, and it will continue harvesting, you know, until basically the plant dies. And so you can get a, a significantly larger harvest if you plant those bigger plants and get those planted early. Well, and for us, it's nice because we started with a nice bigger plant. You know, why don't we just sell little little starts? So I'm start selling bigger starts because that cooler weather, the tomatoes will pollinate better. I get mm -hmm. better fruit set. When we get into those really hot weeks, and it, and down south it's even worse. Yeah, You're like, it's, 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 down, down south, they, 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 they absolutely right. try to. to you might have it. to do two whole different seasons, yeah. but. Um, you're gonna try and get as much fruit set on there before it gets too hot for it. Yeah, yeah. So generally speaking, tomatoes will abort their their flowers if it gets down into the 40s and they're already flowering. They'll also abort their flowers, and it's each variety is a little different, bit different. Yeah. Uh, but you get to the the 90s or higher, a lot of them will abort their flowers then too. And so yeah, they, you need to get get so we're trying to maximize our yield. Um, and there can be like a harvest premium price on that. So I think if, if you are growing for a farmer's market, for example, and like you said, everybody comes in with their, their homegrown tomatoes in August and nobody's wanting to buy t you know, tomatoes at a farmer's market then, it feels like. But man, you come up with something in June or July, early July, and um, there's, there's, you, there's less there's, competition. There's less and competition and there's, there's certainly a, a value to that. Uh, even farmers on the, on the, the big macro scale, uh, we'll sometimes aim to get like a, a soybean harvest in early based on almost like the last year's price. So you get a, a price premium. Yeah, cause, associated because with your, that. your supply is low because yeah. everybody's running out and you're like, here I am, I have some stuff. And you're like, oh, let's pay big money, right? So that's a that's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> where so, were we going after yeah, so that? Say, <laughs> so so that, that, those are the seven. Let's just talk about the risks versus rewards. Yeah, so if I was a soybean farmer, I could push the envelope because I have crop insurance. <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> somebody's going to pay for me to replant it if I kill it, right? As long yeah. as I do it within the insurance states. As long as, as, long as you uh, are within um, the insurance states, yeah. <laughs> and so it feels less risky that way. If you're a home gardener, um, and you've bought all these beautiful starts and you're like, this is this is a pretty big outlay. You may feel like this is not worth your risk because nobody's offering you crop insurance. <laughs> That's true. Um, so. so, so you know, general risks, if you're gonna try to plant early, um, well, you got the replant, got the crop insurance, uh, you gotta watch the weather. Uh, I'll admit uh, when we're in the first week of May and I'm like, well, okay, is it, you know, are we are we gonna be one of those warm years? Are we gonna not quite make it? There's a fair amount of stress when you're weather watching. Yeah, so the weather watching <laughs> leads to sleepless nights. So we have the uh, six greenhouses up and going. There are propane tanks and all of those. The propane tanks have to keep running. So Stephen has alarms that are right by his bedside where they go off if the weather, if the temperature goes down, that is a little stressful. If you do not like that kind of stress <laughs> in your life, you might wait a week. Fortunately, they haven't <laughs> gone off yet this year. We've got them running pretty yeah, well. Yeah, we've got it running but, pretty uh, good. Yeah, so that, you know, they're sleepless but nights, a but, but there's also a, a cost to that. I remember one of the first years we, far not farmed, we gardened at the community garden and we had planted tomatoes early Yep. And we saw a forecast for like 36 degrees and knowing where it was at, I thought there's there's a risk there's we're a gonna, there's gonna get something. So we went and bought tea posts and a whole bunch of um, the frost fabric the Frost fabric, and we tied it all up. And, and, and the only thing I had in my car was Christmas ribbon, <laughs> so we like tied it yeah. up like a present. <laughs> and, and so we probably spent $50 to be able to save $10 worth of tomatoes from frost. Yeah. So there's a cost there. <laughs> there. There is a cost because you have to do some of those protective measures. Yeah, and, and with that, I mean, when that happens, you can get stunted plants. Again, you know, for those who have, you know, bought four four plants or something and they, they leave two in the greenhouse and plant two out early. It doesn't always win for you. Sometimes planting out early, really early can, can win, but often it doesn't. Yeah, we had one year where I was determined that we were going to get the early tomato and so I bought those walls of water, you know, mm -hmm. and it's going to keep it warm and it's going to do all the things. Well, the problem with those is that there's no airflow. There's no airflow and so on a hot day, like 80 degrees like today, you get all that sun flows through and it's yeah. like super hot. 
and then um, it, it they ended up diseased, they ended up stunted, they ended up yeah. not really great. So, but but they lived. They lived. <laughs> they lived, but they were not beautiful. Yeah. Um, I it would have been better to keep it inside. <laughs> yeah. And I'll just chuckle for a minute. You said you know one of the rewards is you got bragging points for getting the the first one out there. On um, the opposite end of that, there's a little ridicule if you tell everybody you're planting early and it dies or gets diseased or doesn't perform as well. So. Yeah, well, farmers do this too. This is not just home gardeners. This is farmers, you know, and you're, you joke that they, you know. <laughs> gotta, gotta love those who, uh, you know, hook up their, their planter the last week of February during a warm streak and go driving around the neighborhood pulling their planter just to make everybody else be like, what are they oh, doing? Man. <laughs> <laughs> and and we're, we would joke, but it's true. Um, <laughs> I think they, they have fun. Um, and um, <laughs> but, but again, the rewards of all that, that you can get an earlier harvest, you yeah. know, because we do get pretty big tomatoes early when we... When, 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 you, we, when you do it right when and you, you pay right. attention. You know, that there are bragging rights. Everybody likes to post pictures of their first great big tomato before everybody else has one. Yeah, the first tomato <laughs> of the season is a special thing. Yeah, you got you can get a big, can get a bigger harvest yep. uh, overall. Um, yeah, yeah if, if you're selling that, there's a harvest premium to get some earlier uh, crop as well. And you get a larger harvest window. So in Iowa, we have about 160 frost-free days of the year, mm -hmm. and I'm like, let's use them all yeah. <laughs> let's use them all let's harvest something mm -hmm. right to get more more chances yeah so and overall we can avoid some of the pest pressures if we try to get stuff in and out before whatever pest becomes a real issue yeah and you can get more succession sowings in too so if i've got something that's really quick like lettuce or beets or carrots or something i can be like here's a crop there's a crop here's a crop we can we can move more things through and get a bigger harvest off your garden overall yeah and just to, you know, one of the things we talked about in a recent video is just onions. You'll get bigger onions. Um, yeah. Part of the, the bigger harvest in general. Um, we cover it, I think we did. It so if you got further questions on that, please, please, you know, leave a comment down below. Yeah. Um, how do you decide when to plant? And do you have a great story on when it did or did not work well for you? Yeah. <laughs> so, so do that and let's go take a look in the greenhouse. Okay. So. So let's come in and just take a quick look. This is a greenhouse that was potted up, what, three days ago? Yeah, so these are all tomatoes that got transplanted about three days ago. Yeah, so I can see generally how the growth is doing. That's Ruby Crush, probably our most uh, popular cherry tomato that we're gonna be growing this year. And- Looking happy. There's that little grape one, whatever They're it is, not, it's a small one. It's a little grape, yeah. determining so, grape. Coming on down, I'll grab one here. Zenzi is a new um, paste type of tomato that uh, we're offering this year for the first time. Yeah, it's designed for the Midwest. I'm yeah. super excited about that. They look fantastic. For only three days in the greenhouse, they're looking really, really good. Coming on down, San Marzano's, look at those things. Yeah, they're, they are beefy growers. They're, and these, you guys, are planted all the way down to the bottom of the pot. They're already buried deep, so yeah. you can imagine how tall they were when we planted them up. Okay, let's come on down, see what else we've got here. I'll take like a gladiator here from the middle. This, in general, is our paste tomato house for the most part. Gladiator, another nice paste tomato. Great Again, roots on this one. For only three days in the greenhouse. Look at Looking really good in here. Come on down. Let's see what else we've got here. I'm gonna grab one here out of the middle. Let's see what this one is. Sunrise sauce. Oh, I love this one. It's the little orange paste tomato. Yeah, those are those are. See, really they good. they're saying it's ready to go, but I have to tell them that it's gonna be thirty some degrees next week. <laughs> yeah. We take a look, look up here. What do we have here? And these were just put in like yesterday. Yeah, these are yesterday. These are the nasturtium baskets. They grow super fast. They're just taking off. Yeah. Coming on down. I'll just grab one here out of the middle. What do we have here? La Roma 3. That's a really fantastic paste really, tomato really too. Nice I like that one. Paste one. Okay, so let's uh, step on out here. Oh, and it's such a tripping hazard. Let's grab 
grab one right here on the very end. What is this? That's nice looking. Candyland red currant. That's our high sugar Super current sweet red tomato. Yeah, and it's a little more compact tomato, which is really nice. Our other current, which these are... That's a white currant? Yeah, the white currant. Also really, really flavorful, but that one is a more aggressive grower. Is a more aggressive grower. <laughs> that's that's true. And so it's nice to have the the Candyland Red where it is a more compact plant. And this is the only one that's pretty empty. <laughs> yeah. So what do we got here? Tropical Sunset. Oh, oh nice super looking favorite. tomato. Really delicious. About golf ball size. Stripes. Yeah, stripes. One down here from the, the floor. So we've got our cabbage strawberries, and they'll, you know, all these will look a lot bigger by yeah, the time. Yeah, they are just they're getting going. We planted but, these uh, bare root just a little while ago. They've all popped, and everything you see by the time you pick it up, you won't recognize from this video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do we have? Let's see, this is our first time offering hanging baskets of tomatoes. And look at these already have they already have fruit on them told you. Have fruit on them so they will be harvesting people that will be buying them will be eating tomatoes on their way home yeah probably <laughs> <laughs> okay let's move down to some more of the, the the peppers and we don't have hardly any peppers out yet they're going to be transplanted up here just in a couple days but uh here's emerald giant one of our our more popular the uh, green bell green bells Oh, you want to show them the one I planted too early? Okay, so somebody did, gets a bonus on this yeah, one. What did we plant too early? So this is. It's the ahi amarillo. Yep. Yeah, so we've had requested yeah. to bring in ahi amarillo. <laughs> I can't get it in the same screen. It's and, too tall. And this is one that will get like five feet tall. And, um, and it's halfway there. It is. It's halfway there already. So we did put this one in a little bit bigger pot. We'll have to pot them up again before they're picked up. But, uh, Somebody will get a bonus. <laughs> Ahi Amarillo for those who like uh, the really hot peppers. I planted another set that are going to be more reasonable. Okay, well maybe we'll we'll be the ones that plant those then. We come down here. Turn the fan off just for a minute for the better noise. What do we have? Ooh, I got a habanero. Caribbean red. Oh, and I mean, these those are... are fantastic. You have no idea. These have been growing since January. The Chinese variety of pepper grows a little slower, but those look fantastic. So generally, we've, this has kind of got a bunch of pots down here. What do we got here? Ooh, a ghost pepper. Ghost pepper. Previous world record holder for, for heat. Looking good. That's looking really, really nice. And we've got something hotter here, I'm pretty sure. Well, I've got Carolina Reapers in there somewhere. So where's Carolina Reapers? Oh, oh here we go. Carolina go. Reaper. One of the hotter peppers you can get. <laughs> yeah, so um, this is our first year growing this one. They said the germination was not going to be very good and the plants would struggle, but man, they just took off. So, yeah. Put that one back. Okay, in here, just come in here real quick, turn the fan off for less noise again. So this one has also just been, just been potted up and brought out here. Black strawberry. That's oh, what... that's one of my favorites. I like that one. These were potted up just a little bit later, so they've had two days in the greenhouse. Yeah, so maybe we wander down to the far end. Start to see some of the strawberry baskets. And again, they'll be trailing out with fruit by the time they're ready to be picked up. But they're looking really good in here today. Yeah, they come bare root and it's cold, and we put them in here, but they are enjoying the warmer weather. So we've got a bunch of things down here that we've never grown before. So we had several requests to bring in milkweed, which I kind of chuckle at because as a farmer boy, farm boy. You were always killing it. <laughs> these are a weed that we just wanted to get rid of, but they are very much um, a part of native pollinator, ha pollinator habitat. So we've got several different varieties of milkweed and they're looking pretty happy this year. Coming on down. 
we got here? A couple things. Yeah, we brought in a lot of things for pollinators and uh, beneficial insects. So we got some bee balm. Bee balm, that's panorama red bee balm. Yeah, which I like the panorama red because it is more um, resistant to powdery mildew than, than some of the other varieties. And, and that has become an issue. We and see it out here all the time. A whole sea of lemongrass. <laughs> Yeah, lemongrass. Got a whole bunch of that. It's looking pretty good. And that one is, is commonly used not just as an herb, but a lot of people will, will grow it uh, to um, try to keep mosquitoes and stuff away. So, I think it smells good. It smells really lemony. And it's that is so let's come on out here. Careful with your stuff again. I know I'm trying not to trip and face plant on a hose or something. Now here we've got, let's grab one from the corner. So this is the Flavor Burst Red Shades of Yarrow. So we've got was it three different kinds, four different kinds of yarrow down here. Yep. And it's, it's honestly ready to go. It could, it could be planted now. It is. I have a problem starting things early. <laughs> and some rhubarb. Got a bunch of those out here this year as well. Those are supposed to be planted now too. Coming on down here. Here we've got a bunch of our, our perennial berries. So Crimark Freedom Blackberry. So this is a thornless um, blackberry that we really like. We've got our own patch of this. These are looking really good already. Yeah, they came out really good. We kicked them out of the greenhouse because we needed room for the other things. So hopefully it doesn't get too cold again. <laughs> Let's see what else we've got. That's another one of those. Got several types of raspberries here as well. They're just taking off. The raspberries are just starting to, to pop through here. So here's Prelude, a very e early season red raspberry. Mm-hmm. Get a jump on your season. And over here, just got a bunch of different herbs. So we've got sage, extract of is it extractive variety? Yep. That's what it's called. And then got some English thyme. And got some German winter thyme here as well. So let's take a look at what we got over here. So this year we are trying a bunch of different agastache. I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce it. But basically, really tried to up our pollinator. Um, friendly type of plants and we brought in, you know, we started from seed, I think it's six or seven different kinds of agastache and they smell They smell so fantastic. Good. And they're, I mean, they're big, they're ready to go. They can handle, handle the frost that we're going to get for the rest of the year. So, uh, at least some of them can, some of them like a zone seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here's a rose mint. Uh, I can smell them even from here. Yeah, so they're doing really well. And we got a bunch of chives, of course. So we've carried those for a number of years. Yeah, I like these. They, we got the kind, I can't remember the name of it. It's got a thinner tube on it so you get smaller, or smaller diameter slices. Yeah, so I think that's it for the quick uh, greenhouse tour today. So as you can see, everything's growing well. If uh, you're local and want to put in an order, please go to our website. We'll put that down in the description. Uh, otherwise, if you found this video enjoyable, uh, please subscribe, like, share, all that kind of stuff. And we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.